Infiltration During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Japan transformed from a feudal society into a modern and industrialized country. As the country's economy grew, the Yakuza also developed. Aside from gambling and extortion, the Yakuza found new ways to engage in business and make profits. They had a significant influence in organizing temporary labor for construction projects in major cities, as well as employing enforcers for shipping companies. Additionally, the Yakuza had a stronghold on the emerging rickshaw business in large cities. Intimidation The labor movement in the early 20th century gave the Yakuza another chance to show their power and make a profit. They were hired as strike breakers. Large corporations, especially mining and manufacturing companies, were willing to pay money to the Yakuza to help suppress worker protests. However, the most significant transformation of the Yakuza during this period was their involvement in politics and their increasing power to influence government policies. At the beginning of the 20th century, Japan witnessed the maturation of parliamentary politics. The first parliament was formed in 1889, and universal suffrage became prominent in the 1920s. The Yakuza, who were powerful and well-organized at the time, were ready to exploit this newfound power. Political Game When the Meiji government implemented laws to combat criminal organizations in the mid-19th century, the Yakuza found a comfortable environment for their activities by bribing the police. With the emergence of parliamentary politics, the Yakuza found a new way to ensure their survival. They used their own money and collected funds to support certain politicians. In return, Yakuza leaders formed close relationships with influential figures, ensuring a level of government support and protection against police harassment. As the country experienced a shift towards democracy, the Yakuza found a suitable space to grow and increase their political influence. The elite class of the Yakuza became an important political force and allied with far-right nationalists. They played a significant role in the rise of militarism and Japan's imperial ambitions, including their involvement in World War II. After the war, the Yakuza continued to play a significant role in politics and social life in Japan, taking advantage of people's fear of leftists and communists. The Aging Gangster No one played a more significant role in linking organized crime with Japanese politics than Mitsuru Toyama. Dark Ocean Society Toyama's birthplace, Fukuoka, was a mining region and home to a large group of dissatisfied former samurais. Toyama organized disgruntled soldiers and attracted the city's bullies. He created a disciplined workforce and became a strikebreaker. Like the Yakuza, Toyama gained fame as a local Robin Hood, giving money to his followers on the streets, and earning him the nickname Emperor of the Crows. His ruthlessness in suppressing protests and mining strikes also earned him the title of Emperor of the Mines. Toyama's role in founding the Dark Ocean Society in 1881 elevated his local power. The society aimed to place Japan on the path of militaristic expansion abroad and establish an authoritarian rule within. Toyama and his followers in the Dark Ocean embarked on a fiery campaign to achieve their lofty goals. They used the money they earned from their illegal activities to either enhance or destroy the political futures of politicians aligned with their ideologies. Toyama formed a terrorist organization within this society. Through tactics of extortion, bribery, and assassinations, he exerted influence over parliamentary politics and the authoritarian rule of the government. 
In the 1920s, Toyama and his henchmen killed many prominent politicians, to the point where the political climate was referred to as terrorism-based politics. By the end of the 1920s, liberal and leftist politicians had become silent in their actions, as no one dared to speak freely. During this period, Toyama solidified his power base through his political dealings, transforming him into an influential figure in Japan. Black Dragon Society In 1901, the Dark Ocean Society gave way to the Black Dragon Society, which was founded by Toyama's deputy. With Toyama's support and guidance, the Black Dragon Society continued its path. The Black Dragons operated with extensive support from the government and the police. It was part of Toyama's legacy that organized crime and politics became so intertwined that even today, there is no clear distinction between gangsters and right-wing nationalists in the minds of the Japanese. The Great Chief Toyama was a highly introverted citizen throughout his life but was still referred to as the Great Chief. In the 1930s, Toyama continued to climb the ranks. His influence grew to the point where he was invited to the imperial palace alongside high-ranking government officials. With the increasing number of allies, Japan was moving inexorably towards militaristic expansion. Toyama's dream and the dreams of traditional nationalists were coming true. Many believe that Toyama played a crucial role in Japan's move towards militarism and eventually its involvement in World War II. However, the outbreak of war in the Pacific marked the end of the romantic relationship between the government and the Yakuza. The militaristic government, which had consolidated its power, no longer needed the services of the Yakuza. As a result, many Yakuza members either joined the military or ended up in prison. The lower-ranking members of the Yakuza drastically decreased during the war period. Toyama died in 1944 at the age of 89. He witnessed that Japan was able to conquer large parts of Asia and Oceania, but on the other hand, he also saw the beginning of the collapse of the empire that he helped to build. His influence on the underground world continued. His Dark Ocean Society served as a template for modern secret societies in Japan. Even today, this aged gangster remains a source of inspiration for the Yakuza and nationalists. Gangsters During the American occupation period, American authorities, aware of the Yakuza's role in the militaristic resurgence, saw the eradication of secret societies as a priority in Japan's reconstruction plans. Nevertheless, the Yakuza quickly resurfaced after the war. At the end of the war, Japan was in ruins. Shortages of food and daily necessities gave rise to a black market in the underground world. The Yakuza, experienced in such activities, wasted no time in gaining control over the black market economy. These markets included not only food and essential goods but also drugs. The government itself was in no position to regulate these markets since it depended on many goods and services supplied by the Yakuza. The Black Curtain Due to the deep penetration of the Yakuza into Japanese politics, the term Kuramaku became prevalent to describe those who played the role of a bridge between the Yakuza and the mainstream political currents. This term, literally meaning black curtain, was borrowed from the classic kabuki theater, where a hidden person manages the stage behind a black curtain, shielded from the audience's view. Today, this term signifies a power broker behind the scenes. Mitsuru Toyama, the founder of the Dark Ocean Society, was the most important of the early Yakuza. In the post-war period, 
this position went to Yoshio Kodama, who was a prominent figure in the world of mafia criminals in the 20th century. Lineage and Origins Yoshio Kodama was born in 1911 in Naihonmatsu, Japan. As a teacher, he initially leaned towards socialism and later towards extreme nationalism. He became a follower of Mitsuru Toyama and formed his extremist nationalist group in the early 1930s. During World War II, he amassed wealth through arms trading and pharmaceuticals. At the end of the war, Kodama was arrested and classified as a Class A war criminal, but he was never put on trial. After making a deal with American intelligence organizations to assist in the fight against communism in Asia, he was released. Utilizing his wealth and secret connections, Kodama aided in suppressing labor protests and eradicating communist supporters. Political Patronage Kodama's most significant endeavor was providing financial support to the Liberal Party, which merged with the Democratic Party in 1955 to form the Liberal Democratic Party. The Liberal Democratic Party became the longest ruling party in the post-war period, and Kodama's close ties to the party and the Yakuza made him the most influential and solitary figure in Japan, with influence in both the government and the criminal underworld. Mediating Gang Clashes the proliferation of gangs in the post-war period led to bitter and bloody clashes. Drawing on his influence in the criminal underworld, Kodama succeeded in uniting various factions and mediating a ceasefire between the two major Yakuza groups, Yamaguchi Gumi and Inagawa Kai. In the early 1960s, recognizing the immense power of the united gangs in the face of communism, Kodama nurtured a dream of a nationwide gangster alliance. While this alliance did not materialize, he managed to create a coalition encompassing seven major factions throughout Tokyo. Although short-lived, these efforts brought him greater credibility and he was considered the godfather of the Mafia. Scandals the name Kodama was involved in several scandals. The most significant one was the Lockheed scandal in the 1970s. He received over $2 million from the American aerospace giant to drive the Japanese market towards Lockheed and eliminate other American competitors. Kodama bribed politicians and sent Yakuza thugs to attack the shareholders' meeting of all Nippon Airways, leading to the removal of the company's president. He turned the situation in favor of Lockheed but eventually faced his own downfall. Kodama, along with several high-ranking government and Liberal Democratic Party officials, including Kakui Tanaka, who was the prime minister at the time, were taken to court. However, due to poor health conditions, Kodama never appeared in court and passed away at the age of 73 in 1984. End of the Glamour In the 1950s, Japan's economy gradually grew stronger, and there was no longer a need for the black market. However, the financial base of the Yakuza did not weaken with the disappearance of the black market. They immediately turned to more profitable businesses, such as the cosmetic industry. The Yakuza generated income from drugs and also amassed wealth through prostitution and entertainment services. In the early 1950s, with the end of Japan's occupation, the Yakuza witnessed the expansion of their political influence. Thugs In the post-war period, Another Yakuza group called Gyurentai or Thugs gained power. Gyurentai was formed by unemployed youth and immigrants who had returned to their homeland without morals. Racial tensions were on the rise after the war. The anger of racial minorities, including Koreans, Taiwanese, 
and Chinese, who were brought to Japan as foreign labor, was increasing day by day. In many cases, racial minority groups attacked Japanese citizens. The unarmed and discredited police force could not protect citizens from group violence. Gurentai not only fought to protect citizens but also engaged in conflicts with minority groups for their profitable business ventures. These new groups fought with modern weapons, such as automatic rifles, making them more violent than the traditional Yakuza due to the circumstances of their formation. Close Relations The conservative government, fearful of the rise of left-wing organizations, adopted a pre-war tactic of utilizing the Yakuza as a force to combat leftists, communists, and labor unions. In the 1950s and early 1960s, government officials, including the Prime Minister and the Minister of Justice, maintained close relationships with the Yakuza. The criminal underworld offered various services to the government. Aside from engaging in sabotage within labor unions and harassing left-wing politicians, the government relied on the Yakuza to suppress anti-government demonstrations and rallies in support of unpopular government policies. In 1960, the government even considered using the Yakuza as a complementary security force for the planned visit of the U.S. President, Eisenhower. However, the administration was forced to ironically cancel the president's visit after a student was killed in violent clashes between anti-American protesters and Yakuza. Retreat In the 1970s, the Lockheed scandal, which implicated high-ranking government officials accepting bribes from Kodama, led to his downfall. His exit from the political stage created a barrier to the Yakuza's infiltration into politics. However, it did not eradicate their influence. Relations with criminal organizations persisted among elected officials and became widespread, but underground corruption became more covert. Gangsters changed their tactics and prepared themselves and their groups to dominate larger corporations emerging in the post-war period. Exception to the Rule The Yakuza is an all-male society that does not trust women, as they believe women are not meant to fight on the streets. Throughout history, the role of women in the Yakuza has been limited to that of a prostitute, wife, or mistress. The wives and mistresses of high-ranking faction leaders often have elaborate tattoos to demonstrate their commitment to the gang's lifestyle or their loyalty and devotion to their husbands or lovers. In Yakuza circles, the only woman who appears in public gatherings and events is the wife of the boss. Members of the group respect her as much as they respect her husband, but she does not have any involvement in the gang's activities as she is not a member. Occasionally, women may rise to high positions and become leaders, but they usually do not openly display their faces. Fumiko Tauka was an exception. After the death of Kazuo Tauka, the adoptive father of Yamaguchi Gumi in 1981, both the police and the Yakuza were taken aback by seeing Fumiko, Kazuo's widow, emerge as the new leader of the group. During Fumiko's leadership, the Yakuza group grew in terms of both members and territorial influence. However, it was destined for Fumiko to be a temporary leader. Within three years, she handed over leadership to a council of several men. <laughs>